join us in singing O Come to the Altar. written in chapters, right? But whoever was designing the Bible for us at our site made chapter decisions that were meant to be helpful. Uh, here, this chapter decision was not a good choice, frankly. It interrupts the flow of the thought of the, the original writing. 
I mean, we read in chapter 4 about these attributes, these qualities that our lives are to display that Abigail explained so well last Sunday. But then in chapter 5, beginning in those first two verses, it implies that these, these are God-like attributes. When we read it in just a moment, attributes that are like God, that we're, we're, we're to imitate those things. For we read in that verse a moment, we will read, imitate Christ who gave himself up as a fragrant offering on our behalf. Mimitai is the Greek word for imitate. Mimitai is where we get our word mimic. While mimicking God, you want me to mimic God? may sound a little abstract or philosophical or maybe even unreachable. Jesus shows its simplicity how we can imitate God. What did he himself say? What I see the Father doing, I am doing. And when we foster the spirit of the Nazarene within each of us, we are imitating God. And he was not some kind of copycat martyr who gave his life in such a way that says, I want to try to earn my place as the son of God. No, 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 no. He was the son of God. He was the son of God assured using our theme today, that he was a lucky dog, enabling him then to love the world to death. Let's read the words, the scripture today, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as Christ and God has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, And live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. A fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. And we say, as I've already mentioned, this last series of sermons is an attempt to contrast. To contrast the difference between a lucky dog and a copycat. Now, if I could say something about, I, I'm going to be talking about copycats in a manner. And if you are cat lovers, please don't, please know I'm not talking about your cat. <laughs> so just want to get that out there in front of us. But we determine whether we're going to be a copycat or a lucky dog in life. When we embrace, how, how and when we embrace that existential and essential reality. A reality that simply says, I, my life is bathed by the grace of God. By the way, one person told me about an Emmaus walk. It was like they took a grace bath. That sounds good, doesn't it? My life is bathed, and every breath I take is infuses me with the grace of God. It depends on what you do with that reality, whether you are a lucky dog or a copycat. <laughs> For you see, copycats mirror what they see outwardly in another. They say, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Oh, that, oh that, is that it? And they continually are looking to do that. Lucky dogs, what do they do? Lucky dogs cultivate that innate goodness that is in each of us, friends. What did God say when he created us and created the world? He said, it is good. And that's you. And we cultivate that. A lucky dog cultivates that innate goodness in us and goes, oh, guess what? I have been given so much by the grace of God that I want to give myself for the sake of others. That's the difference between a lucky dog and a copycat. Let me say more in comparison Here's what a copycat is. By the way, just a little story of a a copycat story. Uh, Churchill, one of Churchill's most, Winston Churchill's most famous speeches were defiant words that he cast towards the Germans after the evacuation of Dunkirk. Maybe you've seen the most recent movie made a few years ago. It's a historical and memorable speech. He, He spoke it in the House of Commons. We all know what he said. We will fight you on the beaches. We will fight you on the hills, but we will never, never, never surrender. That's my best Churchill. 
And we learned in 1979 that those words that were eventually heard on the BBC and on international radio were not spoken by Churchill. When he, asked, when he was asked to speak those words to the radio, to be at the BBC broadcast, he declined because of his exhaustion to his responsibilities. And he assigned, he said, find someone else who can do that for me. And so they did. They found it. They went to look for an actor. They found an, the actor who is actually the voice of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> 37 years later, it was discovered. The famous speech offered by Churchill that everyone has heard at one time or another was spoken by a famous actor, a copycat of Churchill. But see, all a copycat has to do is just simply copy what they hear. You don't need much elaboration if you're a copycat. You, you, you're just kind of an inauthentic copy. You, you, uh, you're the in, in, inauthentic copy doing your own thing, which is kind of everybody else's thing. Copycats, I like to say, dance to cover songs. Lucky dogs can spin with original tunes. Adolescents are copycats. I mean, they want to seek their own style, right? I want to be my own person. But then their fashion looks like everybody else. Copycats. Adult children want to break free and make their own way in life, right? And they get held back by family systems that try to keep them in their place. And so they just keep copying what they've always known. Older people, retired people like myself, soon to be. We dream of an idyllic retirement one day. But how many of us find ourselves immersed? Immersed in the same old activities day after day after day. And even get to the next day and cannot remember what we did the following day. Because we thought that's just what we're supposed to do. My friends, we are not meant to be copycats. We are a bunch of lucky dogs. Let me tell you how lucky dogs behave. Let me tell you from just a, a research project that was done with infants that were ages they were 12 to 17 days old. The research project went like this. The, uh, the person stood in front of this infant just born and pursed their lips. Pause. Smiled, paused, opened their mouth, paused, and then clapped, paused. And what the research found is, is that a child 12 to 17 days old could imitate those responses in the pauses. For the ability to imitate belongs in the earliest days of life. Every child is born with an innate drive to imitate and lucky dogs do not imitate those other things that are out there and outwardly. They look beyond them and say, what is it that's best in life for me? They remain flexible as they age. They will not copy, copy others in a way that cheapens their lives or loses their genuine voices. They will maintain that childlike spirit that says, oh, what's the best thing I could imitate and do? In fact, what did the text say? The text said, and I try to, I, I want to tell myself this so often, except you become little, the Bible says, except you become little children, the words of Jesus, except you become little children, what? You will not enter in the kingdom of God. Children of God are not copycats, mimicking only what is before them. I wanted to say, can I get good grades so I can maybe pass moral finishing school? That's what a copycat does. Children of God are lucky dogs. Mimicking the qualities beyond them. They're not seeking approval because they know they're already approved. They are a child of God. Imitating the ways of heaven itself. 
And it's not a matter of whether you'll imitate. Because that's not the question. We will imitate something, somebody. It's just who will you imitate? Will you be a copycat or a lucky dog? And the text gives us some choices on how we go about this. The first choice is, will you choose politeness or kindness? My friends, we are groomed to be polite. If you were born below the Mason-Dixon line, you really were, you learned how to be polite. <laughs> Southerners can say the meanest thing in the nicest way. <laughs> But we all know polite behavior can be no more than passive-aggressive behavior. Politeness allows copycats to retain this veneer, this veneer of properly following. They properly following a not-so-good example. Mimicking others' politeness. Oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, to be polite. Mimicking can prevent us from offering absolute kindness as God is kind to us. We can choose kindness. And kindness does not only belong to the nature of God. We often say God is kind. We can be kind as God is kind. And we, can progress, we are to progressively grow kind as we old, like, like a sequoia tree, growing rings of kindness around me as I expand. <laughs> Can you name an older lucky dog in your life who is just kind? Who comes to your mind? Persons that were marked with continual rings of kindness in their life. And one day they kept growing in their kindness and their epitaph read simply, Wow, they were kind. Lucky dogs will choose kindness over politeness. Lucky dogs will choose, have to make a choice between thoughtfulness or to be thoughtful or tender. tender. Thoughts are transient, my friends. Thoughts make us, offering thoughts for other people make us copycats. That makes us feel better about ourselves. We offer thoughts about somebody like we offer a nod to a stranger we pass in the hall. Oh, there's the thought. In fact, what do we do now with thoughts and prayers has become a punchline in the cultural joke of this 21st century. Lucky dogs have tender hearts. They choose tenderness over thoughtfulness. Offering empathy as a remedy. Hippocrates described a healthy heart by using the word that we know now as tender. Tender. And Paul lifts that ancient medical term of what it means to be tender and says if you want a healthy spiritual EKG, you will choose tenderness over just thinking thoughtfully about somebody. Dr. Bill Dorries was head of the business school at East Texas State University. He was a scholar, an author, respected in academia. I happened to, he happened to sit in my pew week by week for a few years. I was out visiting his home, and we were inspecting this new crop of peaches. And we were looking over the beautiful peaches that he'd grown. And he accidentally hit, hit a tree, one of the peach trees, and a bird's nest fell from that tree. Now, I saw this man of letters, business school man of letters, literally pained over what had just happened thinking that he had hurt a living creature. I watched him kneel down. I watched him take that bird nest. He began to repair it as best he could, placing it carefully in that tree. He did everything he could in order to make sure that ever that life would be okay. He was tender because he just didn't think about that. He tenderly, as a lucky dog, offered to do what he could. The last choice we have to make is will we forget or forgive? Copycats forget and move on. They act surprised. When forgiveness is offered and they find it difficult to grant, it's likely a copycat has not known much about forgiveness and human relations are in heaven. 
They can't grasp that forgiveness is the lifeblood of our relationships. If blood flow is prevented from me and anywhere from this heart, anywhere to any of my appendages, I will lose one of my appendages. If forgiveness is refused, we lose a relationship. The forgiveness of God, my friends, is so plentiful. It's so easy to offer. (laughs) But refusing to forgive is like running out of gas when you're driving a tanker full of gas. (laughs) That's what's available to us. And we are to live in this world of reciprocity. As I have been forgiven, I offer forgiveness for others. And these lucky dogs have overcome that long-term memory syndrome. You know the long-term memory syndrome? I won't forget that. The last thing any of us want to hear God say when we get there is, by the way, i got a long memory. (laughs) Your lucky dogs don't have that long memory, my friends. They're right back in your lap before you know it because forgiveness not forgetfulness is what's behind it all. My friends, this can change our lives. Now, I know we cannot imitate every attribute of God, but even though some of us try to do, you might say a a copycat feels like, you know what? I can be omnipotent. Guess what? Yes, I can. I'm all powerful like God. I can do anything. A copycat might say, I can be omniscient. I know everything because I've been watching and listening. A copycat can be omnipresent thinking, I can be everywhere, wherever I want to be. And they get in everybody else's business. Omniscience, omnipotence. And my friends, omnipresence belong to God, not us. Lucky dogs know the difference between what attributes they can mimic or imitate in God and what they can't. They don't need to seek approval because they've been changed. They're already approved. They're free to live according to their true self as a son and daughter of God. So not every one of us will ever be able to innovate, but all of us can imitate the best of who God is. So we can aspire to be that lucky dog, imitating the one who's given us grace in our lives. And how do we do it? Well, there are sometimes we do it by taking just steady steps of faith, trusting that the next step, God knows where we're going. Hey, where are we going? Okay, I fought. lead God. How else do we do it? We can take very small steps of judgment and discernment, waiting for God's timing just when it's needed. Or... Another thing we can do, what? We can take long steps. This is needed over apathy. Oh, long steps. Because cynicism is not going to rule the day. We have a hope within us, a hope within us that will keep us going no matter what others may say. Or we can take a big, giant leap of generosity. Because why? We know. We know that what we hold in our hands was given to us by God, and we're willing to let it go. What am I saying? Lucky dogs are really, 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 really good at at the heavenly game of follow the leader. Take a giant step. Take a large step. Take a small step. Take a step. We are not copycats, friends. We are children of God. Lucky dogs. Call to imitate the creator of all creation, growing in kindness, becoming tender-hearted, and offering forgiveness for one another. That's how this lucky dog understands the word of God for you lucky dogs. Amen. Grace comes like a wave crashing over me. Grace comes like a wave Crushing over and over and over Grace comes like a wave Crashing over me Grace comes like a wave Crushing over and over